In this video, we're going to solve absolute value equations. So here's example one, two, um, example three and four, examples five and six, and um, watch out for example six, you've got to first subtract four from both sides, and example seven, you've got to do something with that negative three at the beginning. And then watch out for example eight, it's uh, a little bit unusual. And example uh, nine, okay? So let's start with example, examples 1 and then example 2. So if we have the absolute value of x equals 5, can you write down what the answer is? What could I plug in here to make this thing work? Okay? X would have to be what? What, what could I plug in here? Yeah, let me just take that out. You think 5, right? Because absolute value of 5 would be 5. But there's a there's also another answer. Did you get the other one first? <laughs> what is the other answer to this? There's actually two solutions. Okay. Absolute value of negative 5 also gives 5, right? So when you see absolute value of x equals 5, you can say that x has to be either 5 or negative 5. x could be 5 or negative 5. So we've got two solutions, right? So solve this one. Absolute value of x equals 3. What's the answer there? Well, we know that um, absolute value of 3 is equal to what? 3. And what's absolute value of negative 3? That's also equal to 3. So there are two numbers I could plug in for x. I could plug 3 in for x, or I could plug negative 3 in for x. And both of them would, would give my, my answer, would solve the equation. Both of them would, would, would give an answer, uh, answer of 3. Right? So if absolute value of x is 3, then we can say x is equal to 3, or x could be equal to negative 3. Right? Two solutions. Right? Now what about this guy? absolute value of x plus 2 equals 6. Find the answer to that. Just just go ahead and see if you can figure it out somehow. What could you plug in to make this work? Okay. Well, could you plug in, say, the number 4? What happens if I plug 4 in here, right? Well, I'll get absolute value of 4 plus 2, which is, of course, equal to the absolute value of 6, which is, of course, 6, right? And there's also another answer. What, what's the other way of making this equation work? There's another number I can plug in. It's a negative number. But if I make the inside of this guy to be negative 6, then everything will work out. So what I'm saying is I can plug something here, plug something in for x so that this inside works out to be negative 6. So like negative 8, right? If I plug negative 8 in there, negative 8 plus 2, you see, gives negative 6. And then absolute value of negative 6, of course, is 6, right? So the two solutions here are 4 and negative 8. Okay, so you can try to do it in your head and stuff, but when you want to do the likes of example 7, 7 absolute value 7x minus 2 minus 3 then e equals 5, this type of thing it's nice to just actually have a way of getting the answer, not just uh, guessing. So one thing we can do is we can set the inside to be equal to 6 or negative 6 basically. What I can do is I can say look I want this inside guy, this x plus 2 guy I want that to be equal to 6 or it could either it could be equal to negative 6 right? and then I kinda solve this this, uh, this thing here and I can subtract 2 from both sides just to kind of solve this equation, see that? 
and I get x equals 6 minus 2 is 4 but then I can subtract 2 from this guy and just solve this equation, see that? negative 6 minus 2 negative 8 so x could be 4 or negative 8 and you've got to write like this x could be negative 8 or x could be 4 right two solutions because um, I mean you can't just leave it like this because it's saying the same x equals two different numbers and that's impossible but uh, the reason I lay it out like this is because soon we'll get we'll be solving absolute value inequalities where you have you know absolute value of x plus 2 is less than or equal to 6 and then then you'll need uh, this this deal either side so I'm actually going to solve everything this way just so we have to learn just one method and we kind of get used to it instead of learning a whole bunch of different methods okay so just trying to make life easier by doing that believe it or not so if I have absolute value of x minus 4 equals 1 I'm gonna say fine the inside x minus 4 could be equal to 1 or if this inside was actually negative 1 you see the absolute value of negative 1 would give 1 as well so basically what I'm saying is look the absolute value of negative 1 will give me 1 and the absolute value of positive 1 will give me 1 so that's why the inside could be 1 or negative 1 right um, so I'm saying the absolute value of negative 1 would give me the 1 there or the absolute value of positive 1 would give me 1 so uh, and then I just solve this um, this thingamajig this kind of double equation and I just add 4 to both sides and I get x equals 5 and now I can solve this equation negative 1 equals x minus 4 and I just add 4 to both sides you see and I get 3 equals x so my answer is basically x could be 3 or x could be 5 so you've got to write this down that x is two different numbers x is 3 or 5 right and I'm gonna check that just so you can see that it does work so we had absolute value of x minus 4 equals 1 right absolute value of x minus 4 equals 1 and I'm gonna check um, both x minus 4 equals 1. I'm going to check both solutions. I'm going to check 3 and 5. So if I plug 3 in there, this absolute value, this, this thing becomes absolute value of negative 1, believe it or not. See? Remember when, when x is 3, that gives the, makes the inside negative 1, and the absolute value of that is, of course, 1. Uh, so absolute value of negative 1 is, of course, 1. So that worked. Okay? When x is 5, I get absolute value of 5 minus 4 which is 1 and the absolute value 1 equals 1 of course and that works as well anyway um, that was a simple one go ahead and see if you can solve this one press pause and get the answer okay now I'll quickly run over it what we do is we go the inside the 3x minus 4 could be equal to 5 because I know that the absolute value of 5 is equal to 5, right? Or the inside could in fact be equal to negative 5 because the absolute value of negative 5 also gives 5. Okay, so there's two possibilities. The inside could be a negative 5 or a positive 5. Okay, and there's two different x's that's going to make that happen. So to figure out the x value that turns the inside into positive 5, I solve this equation, just add 4 to both sides and I get 3x equals 9 okay and then I just divide by 3 and I get x equals 3 right and to um, figure out what x value gives negative 5 I just solved this equation over here so I'm just gonna add 4 to both sides like that and I get negative 1 equals 3x just wrote it down there already didn't I and then <laughs> divide 3x by 3 and divide this side by 3 and that is of course negative one third so I have x is negative a third or 3 right and this actually works as well and I'm just going to quickly check that for you 
uh, just show you. you can just uh, put the pen down and watch the video if you like at this point just so we can quickly see that if I plug in negative one third in here three times negative a third well three thirds is of course one so this has to be negative one right that gives me negative one minus four which is negative five and absolute value of negative five is five so that worked because I had to solve that show that this equals five right so negative a third works and now is x equal to 3? Will 3 work? Let's see. 3 times 3 gives 9. I've got 9 minus 4. And that makes 5. Absolute value of 5, of course, is equal to 5. And so that also works, right? That solves this equation. That, that equals 5, right? Okay. Um, press pause and do example 5. Okay, now I'll do it. Basically, the inside must be equal to 2, or it could be equal to negative 2. And then I just solve this kind of uh, tr double equation. Subtract 9, and I get 4x equals negative 7. And um, you know, subtract 9 over here, and I get uh, negative 11. And then divide by 4 and x equals negative 7 fourths and divide by 4 over here and the other possibility is negative 11 fourths so as decimals you could you could say okay x equals negative um, what's that 2 point correct me if I'm wrong 2 point uh, let's see what is it? Uh, 2 and 3 quarters 2.75 right or x equals this is uh, one and three quarters right negative one point seven five in decimal form anyway and uh, those those two things should work in here um, unless I've made a quick mistake but you can cast that so example six I don't think it is. example six absolute value of x plus four equals nine what are we going to do here any idea Notice where the absolute value sign is. It's just around the x. Nothing else. What do you think we should do? You know, we c in this point, we could just subtract 4 from both sides, couldn't we? And that would give us absolute value of x equals 5. And so what's the answer? Well, if the absolute value of x is 5, then x is just, you know, 5 or negative 5, basically. <laughs> x equals negative 5 or x equals 5. Now, now, hold on a second. Why did we know that we could subtract 4 from both sides? I mean, can you do that if you have absolute value of x plus 4 equals 9? Can you subtract 4 now? Are you allowed to subtract 4 from both sides in this case? Well, you see, the problem here is that the absolute value is around the x and the 4. You see, and so you can't just take a 4 out of there because the 4 is already in it, inside an absolute value. That would, that would mess everything up. In fact, this is a totally different answer. In this case, you would end up with x plus 4 equals 9, or negative 9. You would subtract 4 from both sides. Yeah, you get x is 5, but when you subtract 4 from over here, What's negative 9 minus 4? Negative 13. So in this case, we get x is negative 13, or x is 5. Isn't that weird? Whereas in this case, over here, we got x is negative 5 or 5. So there's a difference between having the absolute value just around the x and having the absolute value bit around the x and, and everything else as well, you know? So anyway, just to watch out for that. So if I was doing example, if I was doing example 7, what would you suggest would be the first step? Can you see where the absolute value is applied? Like, what is the absolute value around? It's around the seven x minus two, isn't it? So, what do we need to do? What what could, what should we do first? Do you think? Can you do something with that negative three? Can you get rid of it somehow? In this case, because the absolute value is around the 7x minus 2, we can actually go ahead and add 3 to both sides. 
this gives zero here and then the right hand side we have eight and on the left we still have the absolute value of seven x minus two right and now if you look at the equation that is something we know how to solve right and so we can just go okay the inside must be equal to eight or negative eight and then go from there right so the trick here was to add three to both sides and then keep going so in any case I'll add two I'll get 7x equals 10 I'll add two over here as well and this is negative six then I'll divide by seven everywhere and I have negative six sevenths is x or ten sevenths so x equals negative six sevenths or x equals ten sevens, right? Now, number eight is kind of funny. Can you solve that one? In fact, can you plug, check your answer, like what can you plug in here to make this work? Give me a number to plug in for x there so that this thing actually ends up equally negative four. Any ideas? Uh, can I plug negative 4 in there? Let's see. Plug negative 4 in for x, get the absolute value, what's the answer? 4. Okay, what else can you try? What else can we plug in there? Absolute value of what equals negative 4? Anything else? Does 4 work? Absolute value of 4 equals positive 4, doesn't it? Not negative 4. So, I mean, I can't think of anything, can you? No matter what number I plug in there, the absolute value is always going to be positive. So the absolute value of something cannot be a negative. So absolute value of x is not equal to, you know, cannot be equal to negative 4. So the answer to this is, there. so the answer is there is no solution. So when you have an absolute value equal to negative, there's no solution. So Quick, very quickly, what's the answer to this? Absolute value of x uh, minus 8 uh, equals negative 3. What's the answer to that? Well, let's see. This thing, absolute, no matter what x minus 8 becomes, the absolute value of it is always going to be a positive. Right? So the absolute value of this cannot be equal to, ever equal to negative 3. And so the answer to this one, of course, again, is no solution, right? Now, I guess just for fun, example 9. So you can do that really quickly. Press pause and do that one. Now, this is absolute value of 2 times x, then plus 7 equals 13. So press pause and try it. Okay, now I'll do it. Because the absolute value is just around 2 times x, I can just subtract 7 from both sides. Okay? And I get this, this thingamajig, this absolute value of 2x is just left there. And I get that equals 6. You see? And now I can proceed in the usual way. The 2x must be equal to 6, or it could also be equal to negative 6. And then I just divide by 2 everywhere. Okay? and x could be 3 or negative 3. So x is negative 3 or x is 3, right? And both of those, you can check both of those answers, they'll both work. Okay.